Now, it wasn't so long ago that our Environment Secretary, Michael Gove, launched the bill, the UK Ivory Trade Bill, which comes to its report stage in the House of Lords this week. And it will, in the words of Michael Gove, make sure that ivory will never be seen as a commodity for financial gain or a status symbol. Why should it be? Absolutely horrendous, savage trade. But while we are doing our bit, hopefully, to curtail that trade and to wake people up to the dangers, the cruelty, the savagery, the unnecessary suffering this causes, and the fact that we may be bequeathing to our children and grandchildren a world that is far less rich in wildlife, changes have happened in America. Apparently the US now allows the import of ivory and other elephant trophies. We can now get the thoughts of Dane Waters, who founded the Elephant Project, creating sanctuaries around the world for endangered animals. Good morning, Dane, sir, and thank you for doing this for us. Well, good morning, and thanks for having me. Now, let's start, if we may, with a look at what's happened to the elephant population on planet Earth over the last hundred or so years. How much has it dwindled down by? Oh, it, it's it's uh, it's very sad. I mean, almost 100 years ago, there were close to 10 million elephants in uh, in Africa. Uh, now there's less than 400,000. And and there's also in Asia. I mean, a lot of people always talk about African elephants, but we can't forget about Asian elephants who are actually more endangered where there's less than 50,000. And so at the rate that we're currently going, uh, the species could be ex- extinct in the next decade. In fact, I think the Sumatran elephant is on in the top 10, the only elephant in the top 10 of the endangered list for the World Wildlife Fund. And does this mean that it must mean that the, the trade in elephants, in elephant byproducts, in ivory or whatever, is still ongoing? Oh, it is. Even though that, um, you know, a lot of people thought that the ivory issue was, was, was finished because of, you know, China passing the ban. But, but any ban is only as good as enforcement, and, and, and China certainly is not enforcing the ban. But, but what's happening is that ivory is, is one issue. Um, and, and Asia, uh, one of the things that, that's growing exponentially is the is the um, is the market in elephant skin. You know, whereas in Africa, only elephants with tusk are typically killed. In Asia, every elephant um, is, is subject to being killed because every elephant has skin. And what will be what will that skin be used for? I, I, I hardly dare ask. Is that for clothing manufacture, medicine? What is it used for? Well, I mean, it, it's uh, for, for traditional Chinese medicines. Uh, and then there's this new trade, uh, what they call elephant beads or blood beads, where they basically take the skin and as it's still, you know, bloody, uh, they turn them into this paste, into, the, into these beads. And, and that's the new fashion accessory. I mean, one thing you said, you know, in, in your introduction is about status symbols. These beads are now the new status symbol among the giant Chinese elite uh, now that ivory is becoming less and less available. So what do you make of the, the British attempt to at least do our bit to curtail this with our UK ivory trade? But it goes to the House of Lords report stage. It's pretty clear it will be passed by the government. The sooner the better, I would say. What do you make of that legislation? Well, I think it's phenomenal legislation. I think that, you know, very rarely around the, around the world these days are, are governments taking proactive steps uh, to try and stop the trade. I mean, you know, first, you know, it's, it's like one of those things. You have to end the market. Once you end the market or do the most you can to end the market, and then you can actually go and, and work on the you know the black market, as they say. And so what the UK is doing is phenomenal. Unlike in America, where we're actually, you know, where we used to be leaders uh, in elephant protection and conservation, we now are, are doing what we can apparently to to move the the process and protections back by by what I say, you know, generations. What is the thinking? I know you've worked with with. Uh... U.S. presidents on presidential campaigns, certainly. What will be the thinking from this change of heart by America? Who benefits from this? Well, you know, I think it's important to point out that it's not a change of heart by America, of course. It's a change of heart of by course. the Trump administration. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I mean, <laughs> you know, one would argue that, uh, you know, Don Jr., uh, President Trump's son, is a big uh, uh, elephant hunter. Uh, there's a famous picture of him with an elephant tail. Um, and I, you know, and I think it's also because that some of the most um, uh, influential donors to political campaigns in the United States are members of the National Rifle Association, the Safari Club, which are, which are, which are big, big hunters. So I think the change in the Trump administration is purely political. It's, it's a nepotism. It's just designed to make the kids happy and to make the big donors happy. And I think that that is definitely sending a message around the world um, to, to places like China and Botswana and others. That hey, you know, we're, you know, we're no longer going to push you to enforce elephant conservation and protection issues. So therefore, it's okay to do what you want to do. And I, and I may add that yesterday, a perfect example is where China has now lifted their 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 ban on um, uh, using animals 
uh, especially rhinos, yeah. uh, for medicinal purposes. So. And what do you think going forward is the, you know, is the fate of the elephant likely to be? I mean, are you optimistic about the future, Dane? Well, I am optimistic. I mean, you know, I, I do believe, um, you know, it's like, um, I mean, I say this right, like Prince Charles, is, uh, I mean, Prince uh, William the other day at, at the wildlife conference there in the UK said that, you know, if, if we as humans allow for the extinction of elephants in our lifetime, yeah. what does that say about us? And I, and I do believe that, you know, listen, Donald Trump is only going to be president, you know, I don't know, maybe two years, two more years, hopefully. But and I do believe that there will be a change in the administration such that uh, that America will then once again lead on this important issue. And I think that as more and more people recognize and, and you know, I would say legitimate leaders uh, take over uh, power in the United States and other important countries, that I do believe that once again we will be pushing for the preservation uh, of, of these endangered species. And, and not just elephants. I mean rhinos and lions and, and, and you know, bonobos and all these important wildlife you know uh, wildlife around the world but but i am optimistic i want to be very clear i'm optimistic but but it's going to take the people continuing to push back um uh on the government in the united states and as i said uk is now a leader in this i mean if you look around the world what the uk government is doing is definitely being the leader um and the moral you know light um around the world and, and elephant protection and conservation and tell us a bit, if you will, please, about the Elephant Project. How long has it been running now? And what kind of work are you doing there, Dane? Well, we've been around for uh, three years. Um, uh, I founded it three years ago uh, to, to basically provide free and fair market solutions for elephant conservation issues. And what that means is, you know, we have a three-pronged approach uh, to elephant protection. Number one is um, ending the trade, you know, working to, to change uh, what Donald Trump is doing um, uh, with his administration. And also, I, I would add, trying to stop what, what we call the, you know, what was established, the International Wildlife Conservation Council, which is um, part of the U.S. government, which is advocating for the, uh, the killing of these, uh, of these animals. Um, and, and actually, they rescinded. They're the group that rescinded the, the ban on the import of elephant trophies into the United States. So that's number one. Number two is relocating elephants um, uh, in harm's way. The second largest killer of elephants outside of poaching is, uh, is human elephant conflicts, uh, whereas, whereas more and more people on this planet, you know, of course, are, are growing. And yeah. They're going into elephant habitats, and that's an issue. And the third thing is uh, building sustainable communities around the world where the revenue from those communities provide a perpetual funding source uh, and protection for elephant conservation. So those are our three, three primary um, our goals. And we're active in countries across the world. I mean, we are we are not just Africa focused, or not just a, you know Asia focused. We work on elephant protection issues around the world. Let me ask you what people listening now could do. What can I do, for example? I mean, I'm here in the UK. It's great you're praising what we're doing, but we're we're also citizens of planet Earth, and these these beautiful animals are also on planet Earth. What can people listening do to help you in your calls, Dane? Well, first of all, I'm going to say thank you for having us. I mean, the, the education is critical and key. The more people who are aware of these issues, I mean, that's the number one thing that people can do is spread the word. Uh, the second thing is, is is supporting legislation, like what's going on in the U.K. Uh, and, and the United States trying to, to push for the change uh, in what the Trump administration has done. Uh, the third thing is, you know, of course, you know, money is always a critical component to any conservation effort. Um, but, but I think that, once again, it's about awareness. It's about, like, listen, most everyone knows about poaching in Africa for the ivory. Yeah. And that's just something that's the cause celeb. But very few people, very few people understand the, what's going on in Asia as far as, you know, the, the, where the Asian elephants are more endangered than African well, I must say, I had no idea elephants. until you mentioned about this whole horrible, hideous trade, savage trade in elephant skins and this manufacture of blood beads. I mean, that sounds like something out of, I don't know, Nero's Rome. Well, I know, and that's, that's why it's becoming it's growing uh, larger and larger, uh, especially in Myanmar. Myanmar has um, uh, is a country we're very active in. They have 5,000 um, you know, unemployed timber elephants, uh, and these, these elephants, uh, because they've been domesticated, are, very, um, are easily, easily poached because they're used to being around humans. And the number of, of, of Asian elephants uh, dying or is exponentially increasing um, e yearly. And so and it's because people aren't focused on it. And if there's anything that we can do, like you and others, is raise awareness about what's going on in Asia where, where you know, as I said, if, if, if we don't act, Asian elephants will be extinct um, a lot sooner than African elephants. But, 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 but raising awareness, as I said, is, um, uh, is critical. And, 
listen, people go through in New York City, you walk around and, and you see these little Chinese, I mean, these little um, ivory, you know, statues in these stores and so forth and so on. But but what people are not looking at, like you just said, are these uh, these these elephant beads, uh, which are becoming more and more of a commodity around the world. So those are the key things, education, pushing for enforcement, uh, pushing governments for enforcement. Uh, and also it's about you know, when you make a simple decision about where to go, you know, like where to take your vacation, you know, you should focus on going somewhere that has humane standards and, and, and elephant and wildlife conservation. Um, you know, going to safaris in Africa or going in Asia, there are, there are good operators and there are bad operators. And I think that people should be more active uh, and more aware of where they're going and where their money is going, um, uh, you know, as far as elephant protection and conservation issues. Dane, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Dane Waters there, live from the USA, talking to me, Paul Ross, on Chop Radio. He's the founder of The Elephant Project, and you'll hear more about that or learn more by going and following it online, a remarkable organisation, and that was one remarkable man, talking to me, Paul, Paul Ross, here on Chop Radio. News up next.